Welcome to the UC Health Improvement Academy. Today, let's learn about run charts, a data display tool that is useful in all stages of improvement, especially during the continuous improvement phase. You might have come across data displayed in tables, Excel sheets, or graphs that are not helpful in understanding what is going on. Are there good signals? Is the system huh? stable or unstable? Should I be worried or excited about any one point? And so much more. A run chart shows data over time, and presents it in a visual way that makes it easy to see the trends in data, point-to-point -point variation, spread of data, and impact of changes made over time. Let's look at an example to learn more about run charts. AJ is trying to make the UC Bearcats basketball team. He wants to improve his three-point shots. He makes 50 practice shots every day. At times he feels things are better, but then not so much. Oops. AJ just learned a new improvement tool. He wants to be data guided in his improvement, so he starts tracking data every day and plots it on a run chart. A run chart has time on the x-axis. This can be intervals of minutes, days, weeks, or months, etc. In this case, AJ will be plotting data daily. On the y-axis is the measure of interest. It's up to AJ to select what measure matters to him most. AJ chooses percent of successful three-point shots taken each day. His goal is to increase it to 70%. His performance over the last eight days has a median of 52%, with some days better than others. The center line on a run chart is a median. A median means the center value, with half of the values on one side and half on the other. He used the data for the last eight days to calculate the center line. Now looking at his performance using a run chart, AJ realizes it is a stable system, with common cause variation only. He needs to do something different to improve the results. After watching some videos and talking to his coach, AJ starts trying different shooting techniques. Based on the data, he chooses to adopt technique 2 and works on refining it further. He sees an incremental improvement and eventually has 8 data points above the center line, which tells him he has shifted the system. This is a signal for special cause variation on a run chart. The new median, calculated using the last 8 data points, is 68% getting him close to his goal. The run chart helped AJ measure his performance, make data-guided decisions, capture the learning of his testing, and to improve. Imagine if this was done by Gestalt or not using the right data display. It would have been difficult for AJ to achieve such results. Here are some examples that signal a special cause variation on run charts. To learn more about common cause and special cause variation, see our video on variation. If there are eight or more data points on one side of the center line, this represents a shift in the system. If one data point falls exactly on the center line, then ignore that one point in your count. A new center line is calculated using the last eight data points. If there are six data points showing a continuous increase or decrease, this is called a trend. Investigate what's happening in the system to cause this change. This is unlikely to be a random occurrence. If you observe a zigzag pattern on a run chart for 14 or more points, this would suggest that there are two different systems alternating one and another. An example could be day shift versus night shift. Separate the data into two charts for each system to learn more. Lastly, at times, you may see an astronomical data point. This data point can be an extreme value that may need further investigation. Now let's take a look at some examples of run charts used in projects here at UC Health. This chart displays the use of central lines among patients admitted to the hospital. The team wants to better understand the impact of their project on reducing central line use. The baseline was a stable system with common cause variation. Since the start of the project, there have been two shifts in the right direction. This chart shows the utilization of urinary Foley catheters among patients in a hospital unit. We see the baseline median was 18% with wide range common cause variation. Since the project started, the system has shifted in the desirable direction with narrow variation. This last chart shows percent adherence to use of a checklist when inserting central lines in the MICU. This was a new process without any baseline data. The team started plotting data as soon as the project started and throughout the PDSA cycles. In a new project, we can expect rapidly changing values. Each time the team observed eight data points above the previous center line, a new center line was calculated. The annotations describe the interventions over time, concisely telling the improvement story. In an improvement journey, using a run chart has many advantages. They are easy to build and understand. 
You can use any type of data to build a run chart. You can start a run chart even if you don't have many data points and add data as the project goes on. A run chart with annotations can tell project story in one easy view. While run charts are easy, quick to make, and simple to understand, they have a couple of limitations. First, some special causes may not be obvious on a run chart. They could be noticeable earlier on a control chart. Hence, there is a chance of missing early signals. Second, some variation can occur on a run chart when there's too much variation in the sample size of each data point. When using a control chart, the variation in sample size is taken into account in the control limits. So when using run charts, we should try to have consistent sample sizes. There are countless applications where visual data display using run charts can help us make better decisions to improve outcomes.